so delicious. It's fantastic. Ah, so good. All right, let's get this thing on the road, huh? So, I'm gonna get you guys set up really nice right here. All right, so I had to take a second to clear everything up and I wanted to make sure that I had everything just readily accessible. Um, what I'm going to show you all today is everything that you need during your powerlifting meet. So currently I'm getting ready to go tomorrow to Vista, California for the drug tested North American Championship. This is something that I've been prepping for for a couple of months now. So I'm really excited and I should be able to do some pretty big things there. I'm going to aim to hit a world record bench, which I would be breaking my own bench press record, which is 485 pounds and I'm going for 500 plus. And then I'll also be going for the drug tested deadlift record as well. And that is 650 pounds. And like I said, that is drug tested. So at the end of the powerlifting meet, I will be doing a urine test and the record won't be official until about like two weeks afterwards when they actually, you know, go through the testing process of the urine to make sure that, you know, everything is clean, which it is. Um, all right, so let's get to this. So I have a bunch of different things that I take with me on meet day and I will separate this by what you need to take on meet day like what they're going to be looking at during the check-in process. And then I'll let you know a couple of things that I take in order to make sure that my meat day goes smoothly. So we're gonna start off with some of the essentials. For example, shoes, right? These shoes right here have been with me for a long time. These are my Converse. Converse are a very popular lifting shoe because they're flat and they don't have as big of a sole. So when you're deadlifting, you wanna be as close to the ground as possible the lower you are to the ground, the less you have to lift that bar up off the ground. So these are a really popular powerlifting shoe. If you're just getting into powerlifting, I highly suggest that you get a pair. Fun fact, these shoes were actually broken in at Westside Barbell. So even though they're really, they're really bad, they smell terrible. I refuse to let go of them because they were broken in at the best gym in the world. All right, so you'll need a pair of shoes, and if you wear like different shoes uh, for squat, bench press, deadlift, whatever, you'll need to take all the shoes to get checked at check-in. So um, you'll have shoes. We have socks. Now these socks are my Onnit socks. You'll see that I'll have a lot of Onnit stuff because they are sponsoring me for this powerlifting meet. So these socks right here, they look really small, but they're actually pretty long once I actually pull them up. And for the deadlift, you need socks that are knee high. And they're really picky about it, mostly because they don't want to get blood on the bar. So make sure that you have knee high socks. T-shirts uh, in the USPA Federation, they have to be some kind of cotton material. So I got my Onnit shirts right here. I'll check both of these in because I'll wear one for squat and then I'll wear one for deadlift. And then bench, I compete single ply, so I don't have to wear a t-shirt underneath my bench shirt. Now, undies, this is the sexy part right here. So, they have to be this kind of, uh, what is it called, like a tidy whitey, whitey tidy, whatever. They have to be this material, they can't have any support on the legs. So, it's very important that you have these. If you don't have these, then you just can't wear underwear because they're very strict. You can't have boxer briefs, you can't have tights, anything of that nature because um, they're really picky. And if you're going for a world record like I plan on doing, they actually look at you after the lift. They make you like take certain things off and check to make sure that you don't have any additional supportive equipment on. If you are competing, so there's different, there's different things that you can do. You can do raw, Classic raw, which is like raw with wraps, or you can do single ply or multi ply. I do single ply, so I'm allowed to use wrist or uh, knee wraps, and I take two pairs. So I'll use this pair right here for my opener, just because I wrap my own knees, so I don't want to have to constantly be, you know, three times having to re roll my knee wrap. So not really a purpose besides that. 
I actually prefer my slingshot knee wraps. So these are the knee wraps that I do for my second and third attempt because they are a little bit more stiff and will provide a lot more support. So put all these in here. And like I said, these are all things that need to be checked in on uh, check-in day when you weigh in. So it's very important that you have all of this readily available right here. Let me see, I'm trying to make sure that I only actually have to pack once while I show you guys all this. Wrist wraps can be used in every single division. So whether you're raw, classic raw, raw with wraps, or single ply, multiply, whatever, you can use these on squat, bench, deadlift, however you please. I usually, I don't use them on deadlift. I know there are a couple people that do, um, but I usually just use them on squat and bench press. So these are the gangster wraps from Mark Bell. I've had those wraps for, God, man, like three years maybe. He sent me those, I want to say back in 2017. They're super awesome. Knee sleeves. So I do have knee wraps, and I don't necessarily have to check these in. I'm only using these to warm up, and I'll take them off. And when I do my first attempt, I'll wrap my knees. But it's supposed to be a little cold in California, so I want to make sure my knees stay pretty warm. If you're not competing, if you're only competing in raw, then you want to take your knee sleeves with you because you're going to have to check them in and make sure they're on the approved equipment list for the Federation. These are the strong knee sleeves from Mark Bell. I try to put everything like, this is all for squats right here, so I try to put it all right here so that way I'm not freaking out um, as I'm trying to warm up for squats. Everything's right there. I don't need to do anything else. Oh, elbow sleeves. You can only use elbow sleeves on squat and deadlift. You can't use them on bench press. And because I low bar, I will use these on squat just to make sure that while that bar is down there, there's a little bit of support at that elbow joint. Like I said, I'm going for a world record on the bench press, so gotta make sure those elbows stay healthy. So I'm competing in the single ply division, so I'm able to wear a bench press shirt. And this right here is from Enzer Advanced Designs. It's the Rage bench press shirt. So if you're single ply or multi ply, you will need to check in this shirt right here. There's a lot of t-shirts, like I know the, the denim shirt isn't, um, it's, it's not on the approved equipment list, I believe for USPA for single ply. Um, and depending on what kind of shirt you have, some of them are grid stitch or only available in multi ply. So you need to take that shirt with you to get it checked in. I don't have, my singlet for bench press because I wore my bench shirt and I had to throw on my singlet as well or my squat suit or deadlift suit because they're all getting on it put on them because they are the sponsor for this meet so I make sure to wrap them a little bit on my shoulder strap but in order to just give you an idea if you're single ply you will have a singlet like this right this isn't a singlet this is a deadlift suit but you'll kind of get the picture right it's just like a, like a wrestling suit I will have a squat suit and then I'll have a deadlift suit. Both of those will be checked in. Like I said, this is only demonstration purposes. This is just like a really old one that I have. But if you have a singlet, you'll need to take that as well to get checked in. And then, all right, I think that's all in terms of things that need to be checked in. Belt. How can I forget? All right, so this is the Toro belt from Titan Support Systems. I've had this belt for such a long time. I've had a ton of success with this belt, so probably won't get rid of it for a while. It's super awesome. Um, whatever belt you're wearing, you have to take that to get checked in as well. So make sure that that is with your items. And if you do have a leather belt, make sure that you take a screwdriver. You don't want to have to adjust your belt and not have a screwdriver available to you. So make sure you adjust a screwdriver. I'm gonna get that before I forget it. Because <laughs> knowing me, I'm gonna end this video and then completely forget to put that in my luggage. So one second. So I got my screwdriver. I will be taking this as well. So I'll put this on this side. All right, so now for the stuff that doesn't need to be checked in, but it might be helpful for you to take these items. So we're gonna start off with some warm-up equipment. I always take Mark Bell hip circle right here, the slingshot hip circle. These are super phenomenal for warming up the hips. I'll use this for both squat and deadlift warm up. I'll put that there. Bands, 
I don't get too crazy with bands just because I can create a little bit more tension. I have certain ways that, you know, I can like cross these over and get a little more tension. So I just take a thin band and this one right here. Most powerlifting meets are held at gyms. So they might have some of this equipment available, but I've been in scenarios where like I'm waiting for people to get off of certain things for me to warm up and it's not a good scenario to be in, especially if you're anxious about the powerlifting meet. So I prefer to just have all of my own stuff so I can get all of my own warm up done without any kind of a help. So from there, we'll go slingshot right here. Mark Bell slingshot. This is the mad dog version. This is, I believe the most rigid version that they have. I use this as a transition from my raw bench press to uh, my bench shirt to bench press. So I'll warm up to let's say three, probably warm up to 365, 405 raw. And then I'll put this on and do like 455 and then put my bench shirt on. So this will allow me to get a feel for that extra heavier load without having to completely wreck the body. So even if you're bench pressing raw, this might be good to do for your last one or two warm up sets. My Donnie Thompson bow tie from Spud Inc. I've been using this to squat lately and it's been really helping me create that back tension. This is something I've had for a very long time, but you know, just recently I started implementing it again. And like I said, it helps really squeeze your shoulder blades together and get used to that, you know, packing down the lats before the squat. So I'm definitely going to use this before I squat. These are suit slippers. Mostly um, people will use these for like deadlift suits, but I'll use them for deadlift and squat. You put these on, right? Put them on over your leg and it'll allow your suit to just slide up. If you're competing raw, you really don't have to worry about this, but all my single ply, multi ply people out there, you need these to get that suit up. You don't want to be struggling, scraping up your leg. It can be extremely painful, especially if you have hairy legs like myself. So definitely need your suit slippers. You don't have to check these in. All of this stuff is just used for like warm up purposes. So you don't have to check any of it in. All right, next thing we got chalk. I don't know what the restrictions are going to be because of the situation that's going on in the world. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say the word, but you get it. It's 2020. Taking my own chalk because I don't want to have to use everyone else's there. I don't know what everyone else has going on. So I make sure to take my own stuff. This stuff right here is going to be so important. Somebody at the meet might have some for you but you definitely want to try to take your own. I don't even, oh yeah, this is, this is good. So I'm gonna take this out of the package just for you guys to see it. This is ammonia. So a lot of you all may know ammonia or smelling salt or something like that. This is Skull Smash Ammonia Inhalants. So you shake this bad boy up, give it a big whiff, and then go hit your lift. This stuff is absolutely amazing for amping up and activating your sympathetic nervous system. And for those of y'all that don't know, that is your fight or flight mode. So this will make you do some crazy stuff and add a PR. Can't forget your pre-workout. Pre-workout's gonna be huge the day of the meet. It's a lot of ups and downs, so don't try to do like a crazy two scooper before your squat. You still have like seven or eight hours ahead of you. So. Try to micro dose this throughout the day. Don't go too crazy. I'm using the Woke AF. This is a part of the Bucked Up brand. I've been using the Bucked Up brand for quite a long time. So something that I'm very familiar with and you know, I don't, I want to make sure that it's something that I've already tried in training and it's not just brand new the day of the meet. These right here, Gatorade electrolytes. These are super awesome. I started using these when I went to work for the Carolina Panthers because this is something that they implement with all their football players. It is 780 milligrams of sodium, 400 milligrams of potassium. So this is gonna really make sure that you stay hydrated throughout the day. You're gonna sweat so much that you wanna make sure that you're replacing all of the sodium that you're sweating out. So I'll throw one of these into one of my drinks probably immediately after squat or before bench Really depends on how I'm feeling that day, uh, but definitely suggest one of these to help make sure that you stay hydrated throughout the day. Let's go baby powder. Ooh, good thing I just closed that. 
Baby powder, doesn't matter which one you do, just get some. Baby powder is gonna be huge. If you're competing in raw, you can throw this on your quads. So that way, as you're coming up with the lift, your hands don't get stuck to your legs, right? You're sweating all day long. You're gonna be a little sticky maybe. You wanna be able to put this on there so that way your arms just glide all the way up. For me, I'll use that for, I'll use this for deadlift and then I'll also use it to help put on my bench press shirt. So you'll see later on when I upload the meat video, I'll put this all right here along this arm. I'll put it on this one, kind of rub it in and then I'll slide up my bench shirt. It helps out a ton to put this on. So it's not some kind of crazy trick. You'll see a lot of people doing it. Whatever you do, don't think that those people are putting on chalk. Chalk is gonna make your arms stick to your legs. It's a terrible idea and I've seen people do it like a million times. So make sure you don't do that. Snacks, you wanna be prepared for snacks. If you don't have a car where you're going to this meet, if somebody is like, if it's out of town, you don't wanna to have to drive or try to find an Uber to take you somewhere to get something to eat. So I take a couple of snacks. I'll probably have some food. My wife will get some food for me. Um, probably before my bench press or after my bench press, depending on how I'm feeling. But I'll have some snacks in here that are a little bit more um, faster digesting carbohydrates. So Welch's fruit snacks are huge for me. I also do these in training. Shout out to Welch's. If anybody knows anyone at Welch's, holler at me. I'd love to link up with y'all. Let's do something, huh? Now, other things that I got, these Onnit protein bites, peanut butter and dark chocolate. If you're a Reese's fan, I absolutely love Reese's. I can crush a pound of Reese's in like one sitting with a gallon of milk. These are so delicious. These have 150, I believe, yeah, 150 calories, nine grams of protein, 12 grams of carbs, seven grams of fat. So this will help me out a little bit in terms of being able to recover, get some fast protein into my body. I'll probably eat like two of these um, after my squat. Then I have on it, elk bars, this is the bacon and bison. 21 grams of protein. This is super delicious and it's super fast to eat. So like I said, it's gonna be really beneficial to have some stuff just at your disposal right there that you can just throw into your mouth. Of course, you wanna get a meal somewhere in there. You want to be able to actually eat some food, not just snack all day long, but always have the snacks available. Don't be that person that's starving yourself at the powerlifting meet. I got two more things. Headphones, there's usually there's no music that goes on in the warm up area. So definitely take a pair of headphones and make sure that they're charged because it's a long day. And even if you wanna you know, go off to the side, listen to some videos, help relax in between lifts, these are gonna be huge because it's really loud and it can kind of mess with your body to be like so amped up and then have to try to like calm down and get amped up again. So. To be in your own zone, get a pair of headphones with you. Right here, a little sweat towel. This is just preference, right? Um, I'll take one of these just to make sure that, you know, I wipe my sweat off. I don't know how hot it's gonna be or humid in the gym, so always just take a sweat towel just in case. And I think, I think that's it. I think that's it. Besides these items, I'll probably take a Theragun and then a lacrosse ball, maybe a foam roller. Like I said, a lot of these meets are held at gyms, so they'll probably have those things, but if you're serious about powerlifting, you don't wanna bank on somebody else having something for you. So try to make sure that you're as prepared as possible going into the meet. All right, now down in the description, I will put all of these items that I packed in this bag today on that description. So if you just need something visual, just a little checklist, go down in that description, That'll help you out, I'll put everything right there. If you guys have any questions in terms of what I do the day of the meet, in terms of you know how I do my warm ups or maybe how I approach things the night before the meet, go ahead and drop a comment. I'd love to help you guys out with your powerlifting meet. Other than that, be sure to stay tuned because I will be uploading a video on my travel, weigh-ins, check-ins, and then the actual meet itself. So stay tuned, I got a lot coming for you guys. And then if you guys want to get the alerts on you know, these videos that I have coming out, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification button, and then also smash that like button for me. Other than that, stay strong.